Firstly, I'd like to welcome everyone here this evening. I'm going to be presenting on using engineering technologies to implement good lighting practice. So this summer, I was involved in the design of a lighting system in a warehouse. We had to undergo a site survey we had to look at our standards and regulations for lighting of our warehouse. We had to look at different design choices. We had to look at our lighting control and trying to get it networked together, connecting everything into one system. And then we looked at our results and see what conclusions we came afterwards. So as you can see, here's a site survey of the area. You can see here is our always here. And then our storage racking is in orange. So it's quite a large warehouse, but to really get it across at how large this is, here's a football pitch overlaid onto this area. It's quite a large facility. So unlike a football pitch, here we have Crow Park under your lights. You don't need to have the whole warehouse lit up. You only need the areas where the work is under, being undertaken lit up. So we took a site survey, and when we started off, the facility only had four switches, four light switches in one corner. So this encouraged bad habits. You come in in the morning, turn on all the lights, that's it. You're not thinking about it. When you're leaving in the evening, you turn them all off. So we were using, it was using 29.6 kilowatts of power an hour. So when the storage racks were installed, it didn't correspond with the existing lighting system. So the lights weren't even lighting up the other ways. You're walking around in darkness. And even when it did light up the areas, there wasn't a sufficient amount of light, and the light quality was very poor. So the main aim is to maximize energy savings while meeting the required standards. So the project objectives. First objective, energy saving. We want to save the planet. It's, it's, everyone knows it, there's global warming coming. So we also want to be functional and flexible with the space that we have. We want visual comfort for staff. We can't have staff going around in the dark. It's not safe and it's visually uncomfortable. And we need to look at the legislations and the standards and adhere to them. So here we have the standards at present. For a ganged manway, which is your railways, they have to be illuminated to a sufficient level. Now, light is measured in lux, and it has to be to 150 lux on floor level along your aisles. Here we have, as well taken from the standards, is your 150 lux around a task area. But around the immediate surrounding area, which is 0.5 meters, it has to be the same level. So that's a at 0.5 meters around where you're going to be doing your job, it also has to be 150 lux. And then for a minimum of 3 meters around your original task area, it only has to be 50 lux. So then it's down to user discretion and installation discretion of how much light you have around on the outside of this background area. So you can have the lights off once it's safe where you're working, and you can see a sufficient distance around you so that it's still safe. So our main area of concern were these aisles. There's six aisleways there. They're 12 meters high. You're looking at 56 meters long. They're only 1.8 meters wide. So you're looking at 336 meters of aisleway to be illuminated. But you, you don't want it all on at once. But it's not practical for people to go switching on and off lights every time they want to go pick something up from the aisleway on the crane. The current uh, uh, illumination it isn't sufficient. The other way is dark when the lights are on. So we looked at the standards. We can see here the floor has to be illuminated to 150 lux. You can see here the, the racking face has to be illuminated to 200 lux. But you can use the lights in your forklift to illuminate this area. After some deliberation and calculations, we calculated that the Philips Maxos LED greenware panels were most efficient to light air always. They offer low power consumption. They're, they're zoning and programming. You can program them from the ground, so you can decide how long they stay on for. And even the, the, in, the installer can install it 
and can, it can be changed then very easily afterwards from the ground with a remote control of how long they stay on for. Their suspendable and pre-wired trunking systems makes it very easy for quick installation. So it keeps the installation costs down. So looking, we put these lights into a Dialux computer package because it's important. You can't go putting these in and guessing, I think you're going to get enough light along the ground. So we can see here that the floor weight in our computer package, it's showing up that we should be getting over 200 lux, which surpasses your minimum of 150 lux. When we install it, you can see, perfect. You have more than adequate illumination. Here we have a video. Sorry. Here we have a video of the what it's meant to look like. So this, in theory, you see the lights turning off behind your forklifts, the lights turning on in front of your forklifts. So now we can see in practice exactly how it works. You're walking down, the lights turn on in front of you. So this means the lights worked. When we installed them, it was perfect. Here you can see at night, the crane coming down, the forklift is there, and the faces of the racks are well above your required 200 lux. So, that was our eyeways. We had them sorted, we were happy. But we weren't content with the surrounding areas. We needed to upgrade them as well. After investigation, we tried different lamp, lamp types. We looked at night testing. So we brought the lights in, tested them at night. It was found at 16 high bay fittings. They're LED and they were, will do the job. Our loading area, it's another, it's in the low, it has a lower mountain height. So we looked at a different fitting because all fittings, you can't use them, you can't use one for all. You have to look at a, your different situation. So we used our corn lamps. It was a hundred, there were a hundred watt LED corn lamps. They look like this. You retrofit them into the existing lights and it brings down your power consumption. So the warehouse was large. So you have to look at controlling the lights. As I said before, you're switching. There was only one switching location. So we wanted to introduce multiple switching locations. It reduces bad habits. It's very practical for the user then to turn on, on and off the lights. And we wanted at each exit to have a master off so that when you're leaving at night, you turn off the lights and then you don't have to worry about it. They're all off and you have no energy consumption on your lights at night because it's not required. So we looked, there was an existing fiber network there. So we could use PLC logos with this fiber optic network to create a remote switching locations. So this means that instead of running wires, especially for these switch wires, you install a, a remote logo, it, you put a switch beside it or within a range of it, and you can switch the switch. It'll send a signal to the master logo, which will then turn on and off your lights. You can also monitor these with a mobile phone app. And the Philips lights that we installed have also control in them for turning them on and off when it, uh, low, when it detects motion. Here is a quick example of our network, our master logo, and our four slaves. That's how we had them set up. So they're all talking, communicating to each other through the network. We can see here is it our lights, these are, is our design created here of exactly where we have the lights. We can see the column on the inside of our trunk and lights, and you can see our switching locations at all exits, our master offs, and our logos are at each corner, which the results, easy to see. Visually, no problem. You can see it's dark, it's bright. The average looks here is under 50 looks, which isn't even enough for your surrounding area. Here, your average lux is up at 205 lux. It's well above required standards. You can see the before picture here. This was up at 85 lux. So it was a bit better, but still it's dangerous. Working in these conditions with dull lights, and it's not easy on the eyes. We created, this is up at 185 lux, and you can see your area is well lit. It's much clearer quality. It's safer for using vehicles. But we wanted to ensure the savings. It's not good enough to walk away and say, that's it done, it's bright now. We wanted to see how much energy were we saving. 
So we put a three-phase uh, energy monitoring meter onto the panels. We were able to get print-off lists of exactly how much energy we were using throughout the day. Before, we have all the costs in red, and after, we have it in green. So per hour, we're using 2.9 kilowatts. Now, on average, we're down to 2.3 kilowatts. We're able to negotiate with our supplier. Because of our, we lowered our max demand, we're able to negotiate an even lower tariff. We save two cents per unit. So we're able to bring our yearly cost of lighting down from 9,800 to 646 euro. Our installation costs, we're able to get corporate tax back right off off of all the lights we fitted. So labor, we didn't get the tax right off back. So it brought it down from 32,000 to 29, just over 29,000 for installation costs alone. This was aided by the easy to fit Philips system. Here we can see our payback time. So after three years and two months, this system has paid for itself. No, no questions asked. After five years, you're up to a 20,000 just under 20,000 euro back. So it's all about engineering. Engineering methods of, to save the environment. Any questions?